what stands out to you about these four guys? Um, that they're committed to be here. <laughs> you know, that's uh, that's the cool thing about it. And I heard Coach Land talking a little bit about that before. That's the cool thing is, um, you know, these kids are are all on board, and these kids are you know excited to be part of it. And obviously, there's a couple of kids that ended up signing that are going to wait to announce until February, but. Um, to us, it's a it's it's a big deal to get some of these kids that are willing to jump on board and and uh, be part of the program right away. Why why this is kind of new to us this whole sign now and me too. <laughs> yeah. Why are they doing it? Or is this the uh, players? You know, I think I, I, I don't. A lot of these players, um, a lot of these players didn't really know about the early signing. You know. Well, these these changes and laws that come out with the NCAA, we're more familiar with it, and and uh, these kids don't think about it. And so I think you know some of these players are still enamored a little bit about the the February seventh signing day, and some of them actually have commitments with some of their teammates to say, hey, we're all going to do this together um, at our school, and and uh, so we want to respect that and just let them go through their process as far as how they want to do that. But um, we're happy about them jumping on board and just. We'll hold off until February for some of those kids. As you integrate the return missionaries into your recruiting class, so to speak, these are guys that you guys recruited, right? At this point, this this last class that's coming off their mission, a, a majority of them were committed to Bronco before he left, and so there's a couple of them that are that are or were kids that were recruited, and some of them that were committed before. How, how much do you think that bolsters the recruiting efforts that you're doing now? Is it hard because you don't know some of these kids and all you've seen is tape? Uh, yeah, you know, it's it, and, it, and it's also hard because you just don't know who's going to be a good player or not. You know, it's five-star kids fall on their face all the time, and, you know, no-star kids all of a sudden become stars. And so it's just you, you let them come in and let them compete and figure it all out, and we'll figure out uh, a couple years from now whether it was a good class or not. Giancio Opara is kind of an interesting story from Africa originally. Can you kind of tell us a little bit more about what excites you being a defensive coordinator, him playing D line and potentially? He's uh he's his his best years of football are ahead of him. Um, big physical specimen. I mean, he he walks in here, you'd think that he's a former player that's in the NFL now. I mean, he looks like that. And um, you know, he came over to our camps and we could tell that he was still raw. You know, hadn't played football very much, but um, some of the drills that we put him through. And some of the things that he was able to do physically was just really impressive. And so, um, you know, he's he's a guy that could end up being an old lineman down the road, or we could end up holding him. But wherever he best helps the team and whatever's best for his future, we're going to end up doing. But um, I'm excited to bring him a D line. And that was one of the thing, one of the drills that stuck out when he came to camp was we have this drill called uh, bull in the ring. You have a big ring, and you you know put two guys in there and try to push each other out without twisting. And uh, I mean, he's just Boom, walking the guys out of the circle. I mean, it's just physical, physical dude. And some of the guys that were, we actually, uh, you know, were recruiting or had offered that came to camp and went up against him. It's just, it, it wasn't even close. He's just so far ahead physically that uh, we're excited about that. Kalani had a good line about him, about BYU having had a lot of good Catholic players before. But is it not, is, is Opara, I know he goes to a Catholic high school, is he Catholic? You know what? I don't know. <laughs> he's not LDS. Okay. Yeah, but he's a he's a religious he's a religious man and uh, God fearing man, and that's one of the things that really um, when I, I I actually was at his house just uh, th uh, last week as we were getting ready to close recruiting and all that stuff, and he just said, you know what, this was what I felt when I came there is the reason why I want to be there, and you know he he got his. He got an offer from from uh, the the school up north a little bit after us, and um, you know a lot of people in that area at least were kind of pushing him that direction. But th you know I think it's really impressive to see a kid like that that sticks to just what he feels and and uh, the feeling that he got when he was here, which is excited about. Isaac Matua, quarterback in high school, what makes you think he can successfully transition to playing the other side of the ball? He played backer before that, and he's uh, he was a uh, he was the best player on the team, and that's why he played quarterback in high school. And a lot, and in high school, yeah. it's normally the best player on the team or the leader, or whatever it is, is the one that plays quarterback. Um, so he's he knew he wasn't a quarterback. His dad was really excited to hear that we were recruiting him at linebacker, and and uh, he's a kid that projects well, tall, lengthy, athletic kid that once he puts on weight and 
gets in the weight room and really starts to learn, he's going to be a, a kid that I think is going to have a big impact on the field. You played a lot of safety last year. Do you, do you see him as a more traditional linebacker? Or I do. Like a nickel type? I do. I see him. I mean, you know, we're looking at, you know, Fred, right? I mean, Fred, Fred Warner is a – is a specimen, is a kid that can play out there with the, with the slot receiver, nickel, and kid that can come into the box. And so if we can, you know, get three Freds, that would be great. And so that's always it. This, this kid, Isaac Matua, is going to project just like that, is a tall, long, athletic kid that can run. So It's not very often you pull a kid out of SEC country. What about Oliver Nassi? Like? Yeah, he's uh, – the, the cool thing about him is he started to get recruited, right, had a couple offers, whatever, but when he came here – um, we told him, you know, we just basically told him the truth, which is we're, we're really not looking to s string this thing along. And we just want kids that want to be here and kids that are BYU kids. And he says, all right, I'm in. I'm done. I'm done recruiting. And this is where I want to be. And so he's going to go on a mission first. And so um, for us to go outside of, you know, far, especially far away from BYU, it's got to be the right fit, which is normally going to be an LDS kid. Um, you know, we're not going to pass up all these states and uh, go into, you know, the middle of Arkansas to bring a kid that might not be the right fit, you know, or understand the culture or any of that stuff. And so, you know, some of the kids in the past that we've signed from New York, Connecticut, and, you know, Minnesota, wherever it is, they're normally uh, LDS kids that understand it when they come here.